Hey y'all, welcome back to the Big Bear Homestead. And today we're gonna talk about how you can use essential oils during the gardening season. So, gardening season, we're here, we're in the thick of it. And there's a lot of things going on that can be a problem. So you may have insect pests, you may have actual like rodents or chipmunks or something. Um, you could have a fungal issue or a bacterial issue in your soil. Or you could just be getting eaten up by bugs. All of these different things today, we're going to talk about how essential oils can help all of these different things. Okay, so the first thing that you can use essential oils for is in lieu of companion plant planting. So normally when you do companion planting, you'll find two plants that help each other to grow better, right? So one that just about everybody knows about is that with tomatoes, that you can grow basil. But what do you do if you don't have room for a basil plant in your container? Well, you could take just a little bit of basil, you could put it in some water, spray it, on either you can put it on the leaves or you can actually put it in the root system. Now what this does is it helps to make the plant stronger and it actually helps with the flavor of the tomato. Now with cabbage you have two options. Clary sage or peppermint. Both of these are actually companions to cabbage. But as you can see in our bed, we don't have a lot of room for peppermint to take over. And that's one thing, like peppermint can take over a bed. So you don't necessarily want to plant it really close to something like cabbage where it needs its space to be able to grow. So instead, you can just take your same spray water bottle. Um, it's about six drops to about two gallons. So if you go with a gallon spread, then it would only be three drops. Um, and go ahead and just spray it into the bed. Um, and it will help the cabbage to grow better and taste better. Okay, so another tip is with beans. So in this bed, we have a lot of things going on here. We have lettuce and radishes and spinach, um, but we have the beans, the pole beans that are gonna climb up the trellis. Now, again, basil can get pretty big and so can lavender it gets tall so you don't want to provide too much shade for these things they need a lot of sun so instead you can use either basil or lavender oil again in a spray bottle few drops to your spray bottle shake it up real good and you could spray it either on the soil or on the leaves either way is fine um, they'll help to uh, again to help with the taste and the growth and the strength of the plant but with this one this will also help and we're getting ahead of ourselves but this will also help with pests that affect beans okay so another tip is with sugar snap peas Ladessa loves sugar snap peas so she's always trying to find new ways to keep bugs away to make them taste better and one thing that we found is that geranium essential oil, you can put in a bottle spray and put it down into the soil. Um, and it will also help with pests. So if you can spray it on the leaves, um, you're gonna put a couple of drops in a spray bottle, shake it up real good, spray it lightly on there. You don't wanna saturate them. Um, and this will help with any of the pests that'll get on the leaves and potentially onto your sugar snap peas. Just be careful because geranium is a really strong smell. So if you spray it a lot, you're gonna have a lot of um, probably like bees and uh, butterflies around as well, um, which is good because those are pollinators. Um, just be aware of that. It's gonna be a really strong smell. So easy does it little bit at a time and that'll do the job. So another reason to use essential oils while gardening is for things like pests, fungus, and bacteria. You can get bacteria in your soil. Fungus can get onto your leaves, especially after a lot of rain, which we've had recently. Or pests. You have pests that can get on your leaves and then onto your fruits and vegetables as well. Take for instance with this eggplant. 
This eggplant has little bitty, it looks like it got shot with buckshot, but very small. Um, and this is actually from a flea beetle. They're little bitty black bugs that get on the leaves and they just eat little holes in the leaves. Now, that's not that big of a deal as far as the leaf goes because they're not gonna mess with the fruit as much or the vegetable. Um, but the problem is it can make the plant susceptible to a bacterial um, problem. So the best thing to do is when you see this, um, you can go ahead and use basil. Uh, basil on the leaves will help repel the flea beetles. Also though, you can use um, wild orange and you can put that in a spray bottle with water. And if you spray that on the actual beetles, get off of my plant, you little pest. Um, you can take the spray and spray it on them and what wild orange does, and this is for any bug with an exoskeleton, it will actually eat away at the exoskeleton of the, the, the um, bug. So you can use wild orange spray to treat any of like aphids, anything like that you can use. Um, another thing is like with this pepper plant, we have, and I'm not sure if it's bug or if it's fungus, but I'm pretty sure it's a fungus. Um, so we're going to treat it with melaleuca, which is an antifungal. So again, dilute it with some water, spray it straight on the leaves, and that should help kill the fungus that's on the leaves. So another pest that you'll see a lot in the garden is slugs. Now some people use beer or whatever to kill slugs, but another thing you can use is cedar wood. Cedar wood or white fir. I like cedar wood because it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and it's also good for, it's a natural um, insect repellent. So it also helps, like if you have it out in the garden and you're out working in the garden, you've got cedar wood on you, it kind of helps to keep some of those pests away from you as well. Um, another thing is like caterpillars that get on cabbage leaves and things like that. You can use the rosemary to keep those cabbage, the caterpillars off of the cabbage leaves. So that's a good one as well. Um, one other thing with using essential oils, one thing that we always have to keep in mind when we have a garden is you always want to attract pollinators. Now some people plant flowers, some people plant um, different things to be able to attract the pollinators, you know, like um, there's lavender and things like that. But again, if, you're, if you've already got the essential oils and you don't have the room for the flowers or you don't have the budget for the flowers, this can help. So you can plant, I mean, you can use oils like um, lavender, wild orange, like the orange blossom, um, neroli oil. Um, you can use rosemary, things like that that attract, they will attract the bees and the butterflies as well. So the final thing, obviously, with gardening is when you're out in the garden, you really don't want to get eaten up by flies or mosquitoes or anything like that. So the ones that I use that are kind of my go-to, I use cedar wood a lot. I use Terra Shield a lot. Um, you can use Arbor Vitae. Um, anything that smells kind of like dirt tends to work. Um, and then if you do get bit and you're miserable with mosquito bites and things of that nature, you can take lavender or peppermint, either one of those will work. And also tea tree or melaleuca, that one will help take the sting out or the, the pain out. But then the lavender will help soothe it. The peppermint will help to cool it. Okay, well there you have it. These are just a few of the things that we use here on our homestead using essential oils while we garden. I encourage you to look up other things that you might be able to use to help your garden. And if you have any other suggestions, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I thank you for coming by today to the Big Bear Homestead. God bless and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.